Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to see you all here. Uh, I confess, I torture for a living. Uh, and I do it for a very good reason, uh, because for the last uh, seven years, we worked to uh, create a platform for uh, um, uh, hyper-convergent infrastructure designed for SMEs. SMEs are not like this, where you have uh, lots of wonderful racks of servers, you have uh, 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 controlled power and cooling, you have an IT staff 24-7 on call, and you have spare parts. My customers are like this, uh, it's uh, something that may surprise you, but the majority of the world is like this. Uh, there are, of course, data centers. There are hyperscale data centers like uh, uh, Amazon, Google, or Microsoft, and so on. And I'm pretty sure that the nice guy at Trivago does have something like that, my first slide. But the majority of people has servers in server room where you have some cooling or you have servers in server closets where you have uh, spiders and dust. <laughs> Which means that we must make sure that our platform runs everywhere. Even with hardware that is 10 years old, with hard drives that make some strange squeaky sounds or when uh, smoke comes out for the server. <coughs> Uh, we do it in two ways. One is by design. We try to make something that is as simple as possible because simple means that it's less easy that something broke. Uh, it's uh, what I call the Antoine de saint exupéry principle. Uh, the saint exupéry was a very gifted writer, but before being a writer, he was a very good aviator. And one of the things that he uh, was fond of saying is that every time you add something to an airplane, you add one more thing that can break. So the principle is the perfect airplane is the one where you are left, we are removed everything, and you can still call it an airplane. The same applies to us. We started in the beginning by adding everything in, and it was very brittle. Then we start removing everything, and we discovered that it was easier to look into it, it was more transparent, it was better. Uh, sometimes you need complexity. I'm pretty sure that Amazon, this is the microservices uh, cloud that composes uh, Amazon.com. I'm pretty sure they need this kind of complexity. But this kind of complexity is very, is, is very difficult to handle, it's very difficult to test, it's very difficult to understand. Sometimes you have a failure and you don't understand what happens. Another important aspect in our design is the fact that sometimes cloud platform ask things uh, from the user. Oh, something bad happens. What should I do? Do you want to deploy this on node ABCD or you want to try to restart this kind of service? The problem is that, first of all, you may not have a user there. We have customers that sends our uh, platform uh, and dispatched it in a hole in the desert and it takes five days by car to reach the node. So you may not stop everything and please press OK to continue. That's simply something that can be done. And the other problem is that when you ask things from your user, the user becomes part of your testing process because the user may not understand what happens, may not understand the question, may be mistaken and may be deliberately destructive. So, the principle is never ask anything from your user. And testing can't be done only on software. It must be done on software plus hardware plus configuration because software fails much more uh, easily than hardware and faults are not all or nothing. It's very easy to say, oh, wonderful, this disk this, this doesn't respond anymore. It's a different problem when it responds very slowly, what is called limping. 
or maybe your software responds sometimes and sometimes not. You have to measure everything and you have to trust measurements only. We tried to, uh, let's say, be lazy and actually tried to read all the relevant literature about testing of this kind of system. The first thing is that you have lots of theoretical uh, ideas and very few practical ones. So, we do all the practical things on our, our own. Uh, we did uh, a little bit of theoretical modeling by turning the system as a, a timed Petri net. And then we run uh, our platform inside of our platform since we support uh, dynamic recompilation so we can run VMs on top of a VM on top of the VM on top of them. So uh, even without nested virtualization, it does have lots of uh, its own problem. Uh, each uh, node uh, is simulated by a VM on which we attach a set of disks uh, and a set of Ethernet uh, links. And uh, on top of each one we run a set of CentOS images and we use contextualization to decide which kind of benchmark to run on top. So for example, five uh, field benchmark, random write, sequential write, a mix of everything. And we have a, a little chaos monkey process. Actually, it's a set of bash scripts because we are lazy. So we do randomly lots of things. We detach a disk and destroy it. We detach X disk and then we attach an empty one. Or we detach it, wait a, a bit, and then we attach it, sometimes with errors. We inject random data. We simulate faulty cables. Uh, it's the only thing that we can't do through Open Nebula. We have to go through uh, LibVirt. So please, there's an issue that is open by a long time to, to pass this message to Open Nebula. It's a hint, please. And then randomly, while we're doing all these kind of things, we kill a VM and reinstate it. And sometimes we do a full-time cluster reset. So it simulates what happens when power is shut down immediately on all nodes, which is something that we, ha we find a lot uh, in uh, SMEs with uh, faulty electrical wiring. Uh, the, we have a municipality uh, in, in which uh, there is one of the bathrooms. When you light up the bathroom, every server stops and uh, uh, which is very fun because we can time the people going to the bathroom by seeing the servers that goes down. <laughs> In the future, we will add a few other things, uh, uh, especially packet loss and latency, because we had a customer that decided to put our nodes behind a, a poorly shielded machine resonant image uh, system. So wherever they do their scans, the network goes down, which is fun as well. What we found, file system is very important, XT4 works most of the time, XFS works but sometimes it's very slow in recovering, BTRFS dies in ways that are beautiful to see <laughs> with <laughs> blood and bits uh, uh, sparse everywhere. <laughs> ZFS just complains a little bit Oh, please, this disk is not very well in, uh, in uh, good uh, place. Uh, we started using MySQL as the Open Nebula DB, but uh, when you do a full cluster down for a few times, sometimes you have to do a manual recovery, uh, every, more or less every 25 times, uh, and every 150, 200 times, you need some more in-depth manual recovery. Uh, which is something that we cannot uh, uh, tolerate, so we built our own version of SQLite, which survives basically uh, 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 something like 10,000 to 20,000 uh, full crashes. Uh, we use a, as a parallel a distributed file system a lizard FS, which is very tolerant of everything. Uh, there's one thing that we love of Open Nebula, which is simple. Simple means that it's uh, very easy to understand how it works. It's very easy to see why it stopped working. So we created a set of probes uh, that are host related and each probe helps the recovery mechanism. 
We added probes for basically everything, uh, for EPMI, disk status, disk errors, whatever, and we use it to guide the recovery process. So we have a constant healing process that uses the result of the probes and check if everything is okay. And if the probe disappears, that's a probe as well, because we know that something isn't working in the monitoring. So, one thing that I can say is that Open Nebula never talked under torture. We were not able to make it crash, which is, I think, something very positive. I suspect that other cloud platforms, after 10,000 crashes, may not be so tolerant. Uh, the distributed file system we use behind is very good, especially on top of ZFS. We know that we are not able to test every possible thing. Uh, testing in this way is uh, random, so it's uh, basically uh, we know that we may miss uh, some uh, uh, processes, but we discover that sometimes it's difficult for us to find ways for the system to fail. We designed it so we are used to, to imagine, oh, of course, the network will always work or the CPU will always be available. But our customers are incredibly creative. They manage to find ways to fail things in a way that I never thought possible. One uh, called us because he was transitioning from a cluster to the other because one of the nodes uh, took fire and it was still burning. And uh, he started to removing the disks while one of the network card failed. And in that moment, he thought, oh, maybe I should try to stop the fire from spreading and hit the power cable. That needed a manual intervention. So our point is that we want to make sure that this never happens again. Thank you very much.